Good evening. We're going to call the regular board meeting for Thursday, October 10th, 2024 to order. And I'll have Mrs. Gant come up and introduce who's going to talk about or do our Pledge of Allegiance. All right. Would you like us? In the middle. Okay, up next we have the adoption of the agenda. Do I have a motion? Madam President, I move we adopt the agenda as presented. Thank you, Mr. Daniels. Do I have a second? I second. Thank you, Jane. All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> motion passes 4 0. And we have Mrs. Gant again. Great. Well, thank you for having Walnut Grove as your spotlight school this evening. Um, we'll start off with our student. Does that work for you? Okay. All right. So, Finley Banks, if you want to come back up here and stand. Like I said, Finley is a fifth grader, so this is his last year at Walnut Grove. And um, we sent out a Google form to all staff and said, you know, please nominate a wildcat that you feel represents all that we stand for at Walnut Grove and all the character traits. And Finley's name came up more than one time. Um, and so I think it was only fitting that Finley, our fifth grader, get this recognition tonight. Um, what was said about him? Despite things being hard sometimes, Finley has a can-do attitude. I've never seen him give up on anything just because it's hard. He perseveres through it. He is a leader with an amazing mindset that shows with a little grit and determination anything is possible. So those are the words said about Finley. So congratulations, Finley. We are very proud of you. He is our little sportsman, and I just found out that he's been, uh, he received the sportsmanship award multiple times. So I think it goes to his character. Group photo at the end. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, don't go anywhere, Finley. We'll get a picture here in a minute. Our support staff member this evening that we'd like to recognize is Caitlin Atwell. Come on up and stand in the center. So, Kate, this is Caitlin's first year with us at Walnut Grove, um, and we are so fortunate to have her as a kindergarten instructional assistant. We are piloting kind of a co-teach model at Walnut Grove, um, smaller class sizes, fewer um, students, but a lot more maybe needs um, to help them kind of close those preschool kindergarten gaps. And she is one of the most amazing assistants with those kiddos. Um, her staff member said she is great with our struggling behavior students. She asks questions. She has completed additional training on her own will. She supports students and their plans. She has also been involved with building level initiatives such as reading club and social committee. She always jumps in to help wherever needed in the classroom. She is always two steps ahead and has supplies ready to go for us. So thank you, Caitlin. We appreciate all you do for us. And then Lisa Fisk was nominated as our teacher. She has a senior in college that is a killer tennis player and in a tournament this weekend, so she could not be with us. But I'm going to read a little bit about what our um, colleague said. So Lisa is an integral part of our team. She is the glue that keeps the special ed department together. She was able to help absorb Mrs. DeLapp's schedule at the beginning of the year to make schedules for second and fifth grade all while dealing with her own students and their needs. She will, is always willing to take time and answer questions and help wherever needed. And that is so true. She has been our Teacher of the Year and definitely a very big part in why we are finding such success in our co-teaching model in kindergarten and first grade. So, Lisa, congratulations. Hopefully she's watching. Now the group picture. Now 
Come on back. Up next, we have the Johnson County presentation of Read Across America. <coughs> Hello. Yes. Hi, everybody. I'm, I'm Susan Crisofoli. I run Dolly Parton's Imagination Library of Johnson County. And we are here to give a big thank you to Center Grove Schools for participating in our Read Across America event back in March. For that event, we asked all six school corporations in Johnson County to just help us raise a little bit of funds. Um, our program is free for children, for families. We provide free books that are mailed to families from the time a child is born until they turn five. Um, although the program is free for families, we do have a little bit of a cost that we incur, and so we do fundraising to help with that. And we asked during Read Across America Week if there could be um, one day during that week that schools, particularly our elementary schools, might have something fun to do, uh, to wear school colors or silly socks or dress as your favorite book character and bring in a small donation, a dollar maybe, for the Imagination Library. Um, and we are so thrilled to announce that we had uh, we had a, um, a, a bit of a competition for which school raised the most money per, um, per child, or according to their school population, and then which school corporation raised the most money. This year, we were fortunate that this fundraiser um, helped us raise $8,500, and almost half of that came from Center Grove Schools. <laughs> Center Grove Schools contributed $4,090, and um, there, were, there were other elementary schools that were hot on the heels of Walnut Grove, but Walnut Grove pulled it out. They averaged a dollar and five cents per student in their donations, and we are just utterly thrilled for that. Please join me in thanking them. Before I give this trophy to Mrs. Gant, um, I just want to give you a, a, an understanding of impact. It costs us right now um, over almost $6,000 per month to be able to send the books to Johnson County children because we are pushing 5,000 kids enrolled in our program, which is wonderful. Our mission is to get as many books into the hands of as many children as possible. And we particularly want to put an effort towards families whose kids, towards kids whose families can't afford to purchase books. Um, the money that we received because of Center Grove's contributions means that we will be able to send um, a whole lot of books. In fact, I, I double checked my calculation. 300, because of you, 320 children in Johnson County uh, will receive books this year. And at 12 books per child, that calculates out to 3,840 books into our community. These are high quality books that are chosen by a panel of early childhood literacy experts and they are tailored to the child's developmental age. So a one-year-old gets a different book from a four-year-old. Everything is set up so that that child is ready to succeed when they get to kindergarten. So thank you so much for that wonderful gift of, of participation and of success for our program. We are so grateful. We have a trophy to give Walnut Grove, and Center, Center Grove actually won last year as a school corporation, and so um, you still have the trophy. We just, we just brought you a new little plate to add to it so that you can confirm that Center Grove is two years in, the, two years in a row. Just a little note of history. Back in the day when there was just 
the Center Grove Elementary that's no longer there. <coughs> the only way we had books come to us was through a bookmobile. Uh, that's, and it came out of Franklin. Uh, I won't say how long ago that was, but. <laughs> Jack, did you hear? Mm -hmm. Dr. Long wouldn't know if those were horses or if that was a, <laughs> an actual motorized vehicle. There's a big wooden wheel that they just like, pushed along. <laughs> 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 Only one of us could get on at a time. Yeah. Okay. All right, up next we have the, um, can, oh, public comments. I'm sorry, I almost skipped over you, Charity. I'm sorry. Um, Charity Flores. Okay, Charity Flores, 2927 Coventry Lane. Thanks for letting me share a few additional points this evening beyond some of my initial feedback. Um, I know there's a couple of things that are being navigated both this evening and in future meetings as well. And for the budget specifically, I would like the board to consider how the budget will provide support for educators in some of the upcoming conversations, um, knowing that there's another meeting scheduled for tomorrow. With some of the current discipline and morale cha challenges that have been noted for the workforce, I want to be sure that educators find value in the budgeting process. And I know that this has been considered ultimately in the final budget approved tonight. I worry that if this isn't represented or considered, that there could be additional fr frustration on their part. Thank you. Okay, up next we have the consent items. Does anybody have any questions, discussion? <coughs> Do I have a motion? Madam President, I move we accept the consent item as presented. Thank you, Mr. Russell. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Jane. All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 4-0. And next up, we have Dr. Taylor to talk about the budget. Thank you, Ms. Gouts. Um, the budget was presented. The budget was presented to the board at their regular scheduled meeting on September 19th, 2024. Um, at this time, we've made no changes to the budget, budget in which was presented that evening. Um, we are recommending approval of the budget as presented, and we have the corresponding resolutions that include a budget approval, a tax rate information approval, which we do always estimate high, and we will settle that up to the target tax rates that were part of the budget presentation. Um, and then it also includes approval of the capital projects fund and the bus replacement plan. Um, all of those are the statutory resolutions that we're asking the board to approve this evening. Thank you. Any questions or discussion? No, I think Dr. Taylor covered it in his presentation last board meeting, and I appreciate you showing some of the changes and some of the challenges that we go through every year. Um, I am, you know, I, I always referred to 6,000 a student. Now I have to refer to seven. Uh, you know, times change. Well, not quite seven. Getting there. <laughs> Getting Wishful there. thinking. Um, but, I, but I thank you and your team, because I know this is not an overnight thing. You know, budget. I really do need to give credit. Ms. Stats, our corporation treasurer, plays an integral part of this in helping us prepare the budget each year. So kudos to her work. I would just like to add, I want to assure the public, it may look like we may not discuss much of it tonight. There has been a lot of one-on-one -on -one discussion, a lot of questions to Dr. Taylor, uh, to Dr. Long, uh, because every year it, it does present more of a challenge. Yeah. Uh, so every year we have to ask, Different questions. Hey, I'll tack on to that real quick. Um, yes, uh, I guess it was just yesterday morning, time, time flies. Um, we held a coffee chat 
with the mm -hmm. community. It was virtual, but it was recorded, and Ms. Conrad has that available. Um, we shared a larger mm -hmm. presentation on the budget for the whole community. Great. It's not new information. We've been doing that with PTOs and, and different community groups over the past really 18 months, um, but it's refreshed. It's focused on the 25 budget. And it's, it's fun. If you've got a cup of coffee and you want to read it or watch it. Scott, did you have anything you want to add or the add? budget? No. No. Okay. All right. Do I have a motion? Uh, Madam President, I move that we approve the 2025 budgets for all funds as presented, along with the following resolutions: resolution to adopt the 2025 Capital Projects Fund Plan. Resolution to adopt the 2025 bus replacement plan. Resolution for appropriations and tax rates. Resolution for blanket appropriation modification. And resolution to transfer amounts from education fund to the operations fund. Thank you, Mr. Russell. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Daniels. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. <coughs> um, action item 7.2, issuance of the 2024 uh, general obligation bonds. Dr. Taylor, Thank back you, Mrs. to you. Jones. Um, this one's just slightly different this year because we actually advertised these bonds back in December and January of last year. Um, that's when the 1028 hearings were held. Um, it's at, at the same time that we did the uh, guaranteed energy savings. What we're doing is bringing that back now so we can actually issue those bonds. These do, um, these do continue the practice of issuing bonds to help us with our maintenance and technology projects. It's a practice that we've been um, um, really utilizing since 2009. Um, this provides us some relief in our operations fund um, and allows us to continue maintaining our buildings and our technology um, to the level that we need it to to support education. Um, this bond will be paid off in, in a two-year period to minimize that interest hit as much as possible. Um, and we, this uh, action tonight will be followed by an appropriation action next. Um, but tonight we're just asking that you approve the issuance of these bonds and the related matters for them. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Discussion? Do I have a motion? Madam President, I move that we approve the bonds as presented. Thank you, Mr. Daniels. Do I have a second? A second. Thank you, Jane. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5 0. Um, action item 7.3 is additional appropriations for the Education Fund, Operations Fund, and 2024 General Obligation Bond proceeds. Dr. Taylor. Um, Madam President, this is a hearing. Oh, if this you is have the script, Thank you. yeah. Yep, give me a second. Yep. Apologize, everyone. No, no problem. Okay, I now open this public hearing, and now I would like to call on Dr. <laughs> Taylor to provide more information on the additional appropriations. Don't want to miss that formality. Yes, I know. Also, uh, key to note, this, uh, this appropriations hearing has been appropriately advertised. Um, this is um, for appropriations that we just discussed with the 2025 budget, so it appropriates all that money. Appropriations is the process where the board formally gives the administration the approval to spend the money where they have talked about spending the money in the budget. And so that's what you will see. Um, it also includes then some additional appropriations for the current school year. Um, and in this current school year, for receiving some more revenue and also having more expenses, um, we're asking for the additional appropriation approval in the operations fund of $400,000. And that's going to go to um, personnel cost in that fund, along with the transition from the ESSER CARES and ARP funds um, into the operations fund for those support staff positions that we talked a little bit about in the budget presentation. Um, the other part is the, in the education fund, um, $200,000 to be appropriated for the teacher appreciation grant stipend. Once we know that um, final amount in November, we'll bring that back for action to the board. But good to just get that appropriation out of the way now. Um, and then $2 million to be appropriated in additional personnel costs for the last six months of 2024. Um, this includes new staff that were hired in this current calendar year and would continue on into the next year's budget. Um, it also in, it includes three teaching, 13 teaching positions and some positions, these are mainly support staff IAs, um, that were transitioned from the ESSER CARES and ARP funds um, for a grand total of $2.2 million. 
Part two of tonight's <coughs> hearing is to appropriate the matters that we just took action on, which is issuing the general obligations bonds for the technology maintenance projects. And so there's a second resolution attached to this. Ha decided to have it all in one hearing this year, um, and it worked out pretty well timing-wise. So um, we're asking for approval of that. I will turn it back over to Mrs. Counts to conduct the rest of the hearing. Uh, this is the appropriate time for members of the public to comment on additional appropriations or information presented this evening. Are there members of the public present who would like to comment? Mr. Poor? Hi, I'm Keith Poor, uh, just a community member. Uh, I have a couple, or one question mainly. Uh, <clears throat> I see we're borrowing more money now for uh, the operations fund, and uh, we just, uh, I'd like to know where the $81,000 that we got for security grant money, why it's not in the revenue part of our budget, but where's this money going to, you know what, why, why won't that money help this out here? Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Do you want to share on what that is? I don't mind sharing for a couple of hours. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, the school safety grant this year was used for digital mapping. It does contain a, a matching component, and that's what you would see in our budget, is that we've approved the matching cost of that, and it's our typical safety expenses. Um, but they will actually, did, they're going to digitally map all of our schools and help us with our safety plans um, and response time and, and yeah, cameras. Yeah, it gives access to um, the first responders to have maps of, of all of our buildings. The fire department will be able to see that in their trucks as they're en route, and the same with the, uh, the police department. Uh, just one thing about our match is we're fortunately the way the Department of Homeland Security writes the grant is we can use our traditional expenses towards as part of our match. And so we use the salaries of our SROs as, as our match and we weigh more than match what we're required to match. So that's where that is. Okay, anybody else? No? Okay, I now close the public hearing. Are there any board members who have any questions or comments? Well, this is gonna seem like a silly question to Mr. Taylor, Dr. Taylor. No. If we didn't do or approve the appropriations tonight, what has to happen? Uh, I'd have to come back in a future meeting because they would need to be approved at some point or we cannot spend that money. So or, we would have to stop spending and, and all of these being for personnel. Or um, every time you had yeah. to leak out, mm -hmm. not leak out money, but spend yeah. money out, <laughs> yep. you would have to pull yep. us together, which means board meetings. Yep. Are you advocating a Center Grove government shutdown, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Russell? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Yep. No, that's true. Yeah, we have to do that. And then there's always the end of the year deadline where it's got to be done by, you know, early in December. So it's always a fun game to play. So I appreciate the question. And I apologize for the humor. <laughs> are, are we anticipating the teacher appreciation grant number? To be the exact same. It did not change in the biennium budget. Okay. Because I know sometimes we don't get it until that. All that would change is our uh, student population has gone up, but okay. the actual amount will not change. Okay. Um, Schools that aren't growing would get slightly less. And I assume that's because there was not enough ADM. No, to go no ours will grow it. just a little, just because yeah, but of not our enough growth. to really, right, grow that. No. Well, they they yeah. established that last year, really, right? Yeah. So right in the biennial. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I just know sometimes we don't. Good question. We don't always hear until like December tenth, no, and we yeah. have to pay it by. Yep. And we have to pay it in two weeks. So. Two weeks. So. You mean the government's delaying on <laughs> information? <laughs> hmm. Okay. Is there any other questions, comments? Mm -hmm. No? Do I have a motion? Madam President, I move that we approve the additional appropriation for the Ed Fund, the Operations Fund, and the 2024 General Obligations Bond proceeds. <coughs> earnings and related manners. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Russell. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Action <coughs> passes 5-0. Um, action item 7.4 
is to accept donations for the robotics and tech department. Dr. Taylor, is this you as well? Yep. Okay. Yeah, we actually, it's two donations, um, but going towards the same um, item. So we've had an anonymous donor approach our high school, and um, the two different donations, one's in the amount of $1,000, and the other one's in the amount of 16500 and it will be used to purchase a Unitree G1 robot. And at first I had thought, well, that's one of the, uh, it looks like a dog, almost like a robot, but it's actually the humanoid version. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's going to give our students at the high school and in our robotics program, program a chance to learn from that robot, program, control, um, work with it. Um, it's, it's, I think, like one of the first or second units in the, in the states. Um, it was really a pretty, pretty big deal, and, and um, we're so excited to have this anonymous donation and happy to make it happen for our students. So great, great to have a community member that can make that happen for our, for our kids. I love this. My, my daughter is currently sitting over <coughs> at Robotics at Central currently, and she's in sixth grade, and I think it's great that we offer this to all of our kids. So this is exciting. And I think it's a not great next step, but it is kind of a next step for the kids to see over the one they built that mm -hmm. does something. Exactly. This one will have technology that they can really learn from. Yeah. Once we get it here, get it up and running, we'll make sure the board gets an invite to check it out. Absolutely. Well, I think it should be the attendance one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. Yeah, I don't know. Well, thank you, obviously, to the anonymous donor, whoever yes. they are. Thank you. If awesome. they're watching, if they're hearing this, thank you on behalf yeah. of, of all of us. For sure. Sign of a strong community. Yes. Okay. Just cruise one more of these folks. Do I have a motion? Madam President, I move that we accept the donations for the robotics slash tech department in the amount of seventeen thousand five hundred dollars. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. Do I have a second? A second. Thank you, Jane. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes five zero. Okay. Um, our next executive session, regular board meeting, and good for the Grove uh, is November 21st. Um, and then Thanksgiving break, no school, the 25th through the 29th. Um, do we have any um, board comments? Jack, do you want to start? Yeah, we'll get it going. Yes. Um, this past week, uh, a longtime friend of mine and of the board um, went to meet her maker, and um, ooh. <laughs> it was people probably thought it was an odd relationship because uh, I came into contact with Carol and Dale Toomey uh, in 1968. Carol came to Center Grove in 1963, the fall of 1963. She actually got the job as Carol Summers, <laughs> got married over the summer. She had to correct Mr. Vandermeer when he she he introduced her. <coughs> so, but I want you to think about that. That basically for 60 years Carol was involved with Center Grove because this is the only place that she taught, uh, coached, and uh, was very instrumental in starting girls' sports in, in Center Grove, but also the state, which earned her a, a basketball Hall of Fame honor. Uh, then it also earned her for us naming a track after. What was really moving was when I had to put out the information that she had passed. I mean, and overnight, I had four or 500 responses with stories of how she helped both her and Dale, but Carol mainly. Uh, girls, Carol and Dale were not able to have their own children. So as I always kind of joke with them, you had thousands of children because there were many girls they helped, and these stories really brought that to light uh, in different ways. Uh, back in the day, you could take kids to the movies. You could take them, they took them skiing on their boat uh, and did other things uh, to help these girls, uh, sometimes from challenging homes. Um, she was not only on the board here, she was also on the, the board at uh, Franklin College, uh, <coughs> which was her alma mater there. So um, just um, a good example for the rest of us. She loves Center Grove very much, and uh, she will be sorely missed. And please keep Dale. He's, he's really having a hard time with it, which would be expected. Thank you. Jane? 
Now, I don't want to top what Jack said. I think it was beautiful. But, you know, I, I was pleasure to see her when I was here as a student and then serve with her for four years. And the Toomeys are wonderful people. They're all Center Grove. I mean, we've lost two icons this year between uh, Gary Robinson and, Darryl, and, and Carol Toomey. So keep them in, in your thoughts. Um, apologies for being late tonight. I was pulling double duty over at Central Nine. We actually, Carol was on the Central Nine board as well. So we, we spent a few minutes talking about Carol at the C9 meeting tonight. And, uh, everybody over at Central Nine loved Carol to death. I mean, she's kind of hard not to. So. Yeah, I just. Um, because this was a late edition, but it's been advertised. We have a pre-formal bargaining hearing tomorrow at 4.15 here in the boardroom. Just wanted to make sure everybody knew that. So, that's it. Okay, great. All right, any more questions? Okay, oh, we are, we are going to have an exec questioning directly after this meeting. All right, meeting adjourned.